What is up everyone, Munching Orange here, and welcome back to Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Last episode, we took on Brock in the Pewter City Gym, and today we're going to be heading through Mount Moon. But before we get to it, there's actually a very special Pokemon that I want to catch uh, that you can find right outside of Mount Moon here on Route 3. I believe also on Route 4, but uh, you need a couple of requirements in order to... Whoa, there it is already! Charmander! Oh my gosh! Uh, Charmander will not normally appear in this route, like if you're just running through it, it's pretty rare for it to appear, uh, but it actually becomes really easy to find it if you get a little combo going, and holy moly, I'm so bad at throwing these Pokeballs, but um, as you will see after I catch this little Ekans here, I've got a combo going of like 11 right now, and I believe after 10, uh, it activates the spawn of some special Pokemon in a route, like the Bulbasaur that we found in Viridian Forest. Um, but I think Bulbasaur actually showed up for us normally, like we didn't have to get a combo going, so it could just be really rare in the route, but getting the combo will definitely help make it more likely for that rare Pokemon to appear. And in this route, it is of course going to be Charmander popping up once again. I am so excited guys to add a little Fuego to our team. I know a lot of you guys as well in the comments have been asking me uh, to catch a Fuego, and this is where you can find it. And if you don't know, Fuego is usually what I nickname my Charmander. And uh, this little guy here is going to be no exception. So there we go. Charmander has been caught. And if you guys are excited for the return of Fuego, Darwin, Yegdip, and friends, make sure to hit that like button. And let's get into the episode now. I guess we're already into it. Uh, but there's a couple of other things that I did want to show off here in Route 3. Or at least a couple of other Pokemon as Bellsprout's learning a move. Ain't nobody got time for your sleep powder, Bellsprout, come on! Uh, you can see I've also gained quite a lot of levels as I've been chaining the Ekans in this route here. Uh, and the higher the combo chain goes, the more experience I think you also get, so... There he is, the lizard Pokémon! The flame at the tip of its tail makes a sound as it burns, you can only hear it in quiet places. That's pretty cool, I've also heard that if the flame on a Charmander's tail goes out, it might die, which is... Pretty uh, sad if you ask me. I don't know if that's true. I think it was in the Pokemon anime that they said that. Uh, but before we move on to Mount Moon, I did want to show off the Let's Go Pikachu version because if you guys don't know, Ekans is actually a version exclusive to Eevee. And over in Let's Go Pikachu, you can actually find, I believe, Sandshrew. Like, I'm not 100% sure because you can actually find both Sandshrew and Mankey, which are both version exclusives to Let's Go Pikachu, uh, which in my opinion makes this route a little bit more biased towards that version. But, hey, I'm still Let's Go Eevee all the way. You can find Charmander in both games, uh, so just, if you're having difficulty finding one, get a chain, keep catching the same Pokemon over and over, and once you get past 10, those Charmanders should be popping up, no problem. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and actually add that Charmander to our party. And I also want to show off another feature in this game that I haven't really done yet. As you can see, I have a lot of Ekans and a lot of other repeat Pokemon. And just like in Pokemon Go, you can actually transfer those Pokemon over to Professor Oak. Well, I guess in Pokemon Go, it's to Professor Willow. But uh, if we sort them by Pokedex number, that should make it a little bit easier. Yep. So we can just get rid of all of these repeats. And let's go to send to Professor. Uh, so we'll go for all of these Caterpies first. And I feel bad about these Pikachus, I don't really want to transfer them, but I'm just going to transfer all of our repeat Pokemon right now. And there we go. Can send all those to the Professor all at once. You got a message back. Thanks for sending along those Pokemon. They will help a good deal with my research. And would you look at this, you sent me 14 Ekans. That's it. I think you've earned some candy for all of your help. Candies make your Pokemon stronger, so use them on a Pokemon you'd like to train well. And there you go. Every Pokemon, I think, gives a certain type of candy, so like the Mighty uh, is probably from all those Ekans that we just traded. Uh, I feel like the Quick Candy are probably from the Pidgey or Caterpie? I mean, I don't know exactly which Pokemon gives which one, but 28 Pokemon total transferred there. That's quite a lot, um, and I still have a Repeat Weedle. You know what? I'm going to keep the Repeat Weedle, though, but we will definitely add Charmander to our party. No, 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 no. I don't want to transfer him. Um... There we go, add to party, and I'm sorry little Ekans, I like you, but, you know, you were only meant to stay for so long. Um, before I forget too, I do want to nickname some of our Pokemon here, so let's go to Bulbasaur first of all, change that name up, and make it official now that you are a part of the team, little buddy. For right now, you will be Kaisar, or Caesar, which is the real way to pronounce it, but I don't know why I find it funny to say Kaisar. Uh, and Charmander is also going to be receiving a nickname. You all know what this is going to be. 
Welcome to the squad, Fuego, and we're gonna actually take him out of his Pokeball right now. Um, I guess I should also put Caesar up first. Um, move Pokemon. Since we're heading into Mount Moon, I'm expecting a lot of Rock-type Pokemon, and in general, Pokemon that Bulbasaur can probably take out. But look at that, we've got Charmander following us now. This is so awesome. And with all of that out of the way, guys, it is finally time to head into Mount Moon. You can see Meowth is chilling on top of uh, the gate there. I'm not sure if that's like Team Rocket's Meowth or just a random Meowth, but I guess we'll find out right now as we got Team Rocket in front of us. Looks like there's nothing here. Then let's just search farther in. You! You were eavesdropping on us now, weren't you? Meowth, you were supposed to keep watch! I'm still upset that Meowth doesn't talk. I don't know why that is. Like, it's just... Why put Team Rocket if you're not gonna have the Meowth talk too? Or maybe actually only Team Rocket can understand the Meowth, but then again in the anime everybody could understand him talk, so... Anyway, we know there are rare fossils buried around here somewhere. If you've got any, you'd better hand them over to us, Twerp! That's right, if anyone is gonna profit off those rare fossils, it's gonna be us! Wahahaha! <laughs> Are they blasting off, or I guess running off again in this case? I'm still upset that Meowth doesn't talk, man. Like, that's forever gonna haunt me. Beware, Zubat's a bloodsucker, watch out for its leech life. Look at that tiny little Geodude over there! I think it's because the animation hasn't finished. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty funny. It looked like it was gonna be a tiny version, um, but nope, just regular old Geodude who hasn't quite finished loading into the game. But welcome to Mount Moon, everybody. I'm loving the music in here already. It's bringing back some memories of way too many Zubats. Uh, but thankfully in this game, of course, you know, you can just kind of run around them or use a repel as well, which I think I did buy some repels in the last episode. So uh, we can definitely make some use of those later on. But for now, we've got Butterfree coming out here. This is a bug catcher, so I guess that makes sense. Uh, but I'm a little bit upset that it's not really a Pokemon Caesar can handle here. Yeah, we don't have anything that can really hurt it. But, uh, I mean, it is level 7, and we're level 11. You know, a little 7-11 action. So let's just try it out, see how much we do. Oh, whoa. The Gustin is hurting, bro. Yeah, I gotta get out of here, actually. And I guess this is a good time to show off that Yegdip actually learned Wing Attack off screen while I was catching all those Ekans. You know, we gained quite a lot of levels uh, on Darwin, Yegdip, and the rest of the squad. And we're still gaining the levels right here, so Pikachu's gonna get one there. I've never really nicknamed Pikachu. I still don't know if I should. I do know that I don't want Double Team, though. I mean, it's, it's not a bad move. I just... If you guys know anything about me, I, at least in regular playthroughs, don't really use... Uh, stat enhancing moves all that much. I mean, they're obviously really useful, especially later on in the game when you got some tough uh, trainers like the Elite Four, gym leaders and all that, you know. It can definitely help, but double team just raises evasiveness and it's not really the best thing to raise, honestly. So, uh, let's see. We, as the ring gets smaller, there's a chance to try to... Okay. Like, I don't know why it gives us these random tips after we've already caught like 50 Pokemon. More than that at this point. Like, we clearly know that if the ring is smaller and you hit it right in the center, you can get that excellent, which we just did. And there we go. This is going to be our first Geodude caught here. Definitely still trying to catch uh, all of the new Pokemon in the routes, you know. Like everything that we don't have in the Pokedex yet. Uh, not just for, you know, the experience, but also for the Pokedex's sake. Because I actually want to try to fill up the Pokedex as much as we can before we beat this game. I'm curious to know, like, how full you can get it. Uh, if you just catch everything new in a route, like, as you're just playing the game normally. And actually, there's a little Paris, which we also have not caught yet. So, let's go ahead and do that. And I also kind of want to keep a streak going because I still believe we can find a shiny Pokemon before the playthrough's over. I have not gotten over... Oh my gosh. Apparently, I haven't gotten over how to throw this Pokeball, or I guess I just haven't learned properly. But I do feel like also... Uh, sometimes it just doesn't respond exactly the way you want it to. Like, it's motion controls, right? There's a little bit of unreliableness to it naturally just because it's motion control. Uh, but I don't know if any of you guys have the same issue. Maybe you can let me know in the comments. But sometimes I'll flick the Pokeball like straight up and it'll just go like completely the opposite way. Or like I'll be trying to throw it left and it goes right. And I, I don't know. It's just like unreliable, I guess, sometimes. But most of the time, if you just flick it straight up, it should work properly, so... Maybe I'm just using excuses right now for how bad I am. Uh, but anyway, we've got a last over here, Evelyn, 
who we actually cannot avoid. And there's actually a lot of trainers like that here in Mount Moon, so uh, as I mentioned last episode, I am going to try to skip some of these battles. Since you all know, they basically go down the same way. We hit one attack that's super effective, take it down in one hit, and uh, collect our experience. So yeah, for battles where it's a Pokemon we've never seen before, or like it might actually be challenging, I'll definitely show it off. But otherwise, uh, I guess we'll do this format where I just kind of skip to when we kill the Pokemon or faint it. Uh, I don't like saying kill because obviously Pokemon doesn't use that term, but we got a revive last episode and... I had a dilemma about how revives should only work if you're dead. Anyway, you're pretty fast, kid. But Jessie's faster <laughs> as she scurries off just as quickly as we saw her. Uh, I think down here we got some items. A youngster, I'm gonna go ahead and not talk to him. Yeah, there's the item. An awakening! Wow! I was just talking about fainting and dying and I guess sleeping is a thing too, so definitely gotta keep those awakenings around just in case you snooze off a little bit. And here we've got actually our first uh, super nerd. I was gonna say something else, but I waited until it actually popped up. The trainer type or whatever you call that trainer class, I guess, is super nerd. And he actually does have a new Pokemon, which is Grimer. I don't actually have anything super effective against this dude, but you know, Darwin's always pretty good at taking down, well, pretty much anything. We did get a headbutt TM last episode, so I feel like we should teach that to Darwin right now. And actually, before I forget too, there's something else that a lot of people have been asking me in the comments uh, regarding Darwin, our little Eevee, that I keep forgetting to do. So, whoa. Did you see how the Super Nerd's face went like dark while he uh, issued his command? I guess we're not going to get to see it again because our quick attack should take down Grimer here. Uh, but maybe, just maybe we'll see it. I don't know why it like kind of lagged there for a second, but yeah, we're not going to get to see it. Maybe like when he gets defeated? I don't know. I want to see it again, but I might just have to do the instant replay for you guys, or you can always go back on the video, of course. My Pokemon won't do this. Dude's actually crying. Oh my gosh. I feel so bad now. Wow. Okay, well, I guess we've got to make ourselves feel better then by playing with Darwin. Oh, Eevee sad. What's going on? Oh, it might be the poisoning or well, I guess it's just tired or he is but let's give him a little pet and you know Darwin will be right back up to shape, you know, we gotta scratch the head a little bit. Maybe maybe under the chin, you know, this is where I like to get scratched Jeez, am I like a dog or something? Isn't that isn't that like what puppies like being scratched right here? Come on eh, eh. There we go nice and happy now, but this is actually not where I meant to go uh, so instead, let's go to the bag and the clothing trunk. Now, we got an outfit for Eevee a long, long time ago back in Pallet Town uh, from our rival's sister, I think. And yeah, you can put on the sports cap to make your Eevee or Pikachu match you. Uh, you can also do a little vest, I believe. Oh yeah, there we go. I don't really want to wear the vest, though. I kind of just like the hat, so yeah, we'll put the hat on Eevee for now at all times. Like in the overworld, in the playing with, in the battles, it will always have that little hat. Uh, which is really awesome. I love me some character customization as you guys know and in this game There's not too much. There's only like outfits, but I think there's a lot of outfits actually We just have one so far, but there we go now people can stop asking me to put the outfit on Eevee We've got the matching hats now. Look at how cool that looks. I love it. All right over here. We've got an ether um, That of course will raise your PP, but I feel like in this game. I've literally never run out of PP on a move like I don't even know if you can, dude. This game is just, like, not the most challenging Pokemon game, of course. Uh, but we all knew that from before the game even came out. It's about the adventure. It's about the thrill of catching them all. And, uh, I guess finding shinies, because I've seen a lot of people find shiny Pokemon already. And speaking of, well, we don't really have a shiny, but we've got little sparkles around this tiny Zubat here. And I'm surprised that it took us this long to run into a Zubat, because as you guys remember... Mount Moon and basically every cave ever in the original Pokemon Yellow and Fire Red Leaf Green is overrun with Zubats. Like every couple of steps you'll run into some Zubats and I guess they decided, you know, people have had enough. Enough is enough uh, with the Zubats as Fuego here is learning Smokescreen. And we get to register little Zubat in the Pokedex. Little Zubat, I feel like that would be a pretty good SoundCloud rapper name. 
You'd be the most annoying, you know, like you're overbearing, you're in every cave, you're lurking in the darkness, just waiting to pop out with that new mixtape, you know, with some fire. Okay, I'm getting too into this now, I don't know why, but Lil Zubat, make it happen. Anyway, we got last Miriam over here, and she's actually got a Clefairy, which is another Pokemon that we can find here in Mount Moon, uh, but we haven't quite run into yet. However, this is the first Pokemon that I think, wait a second, look above the fight. What is that? I'm gonna shake it up and see. Darwin support? Whoa! What is going on? Huh? That was weird, but, you know, I'll take it. That actually also used up my move, though, so... It basically gave us a stat raise in everything, but it cost us the move. I feel like there's a move that's like that, though, but I can't think of it right now. Maybe Ancient Power? But it's only as a side effect. Anyway, we didn't really do that much damage with the Vine Whip, so even though we got Darwin's boost there, uh, it didn't really help out too much, I guess. Caesar is, after all, only, or I guess, a pretty new Pokemon. It's level 12, so it's definitely higher than this Clefairy. I don't know why I'm going for Lisi. This battle's taking us a little bit longer than I was hoping for. It's not a bad strategy either, it's just never been my personal preference, you know. I am not a stall player at all. Uh, I just like full-out attack, full-out aggression, just take him down in one hit and move on with my life. And uh, finally, we can get to do that as a Leech Seed should take down Clefairy. Yep, sap that right up. And there it is. A little bow tie on its back. Makes me feel a little bad, but... Yeah, we only gained one HP off of that Leech Seed, so... I'm convinced that last episode when we were fighting that coach, Kareem, I think it was, like... It looked like his Bulbasaur was healing for insane amounts, but it was probably because its HP stat overall was so low that it just was an illusion, basically. Yikes! Quit following us! Oh, James with the yikes. Okay, I see someone's been, uh, hitting up Twitch chat a little bit too much with that purple hair, you know, to match the Twitch colors. Did you come to explore the cave too? Well, guess so? I'm just trying to get to Cerulean, man. I'm trying to take on all the gyms, take down Misty, but... I guess you've got to take down a little Sandshrew first. And like I mentioned, you can actually get Sandshrew in these routes outside Mont Moon, but only in Let's Go Pikachu version. Uh, thankfully, this is finally a ground type, which is what I was expecting throughout this whole route or Mount Moon area, uh, because Caesar can, of course, handle those no problem. Whip them to shape with them vines. Chop them up into a little salad, if you know what I'm saying. And it looks like Darwin is learning Bite now, so I guess we'll get rid of Tail Whip. Uh, this also reminds me, I gotta check out our TMs. I haven't done that yet, uh, but we definitely got a couple of them last episode. I think one from Brock and another one from, like, a random NPC. Uh, or it could have been, actually, the coach that I was just talking about. I think when we beat one of them, uh, he did give us a TM for headbutts, so... Definitely check that out. But, we've got a surprising hiker over here. Look at his hat! <laughs> it looks like his hat are, like, eyes. Like, really surprised-looking eyes. Okay, you can't really see it now, but... When we get back into the overworld, oh no, yeah, you can kind of see it. <laughs> I don't know, it reminds me of like, not a yokai. Is it yokai? No, the other game that's kind of like it. Nino Kuni. It reminds me of a Nino Kuni character, like his hat with the eyes and like the meh looking face. Like that could be a Pokemon itself. His hat could literally be a Pokemon is what I'm saying. You almost had it, Hiker Marco. Surprised again. Just keep on scratching that beard, man. That's all you got going for you. But just look at that thing. Okay, I guess it doesn't really look like a Pokemon anymore. But it definitely looks like surprised eyes. Like, <laughs> I don't know if I'm the only one that finds this that amusing. Probably. I, I find the pretty small things super amusing sometimes. Uh, but we got a pearl over here. And before we move on to that staircase, I think we skipped one right over here. Um, as well as a trainer. So I'll definitely go back and take that youngster on at a later point. But... Yeah, I gotta make sure to check out every nook and cranny of Mount Moon here. Um, and down here, we've got, I believe, a Moonstone, right? Oh, I dug it. Okay, never mind. I thought there was a Moonstone here. I, I feel like there is a Moonstone here, though. Oh, no, Paris! Our Pokemon doesn't always react to hidden items, though. But, uh, as we've learned, there are actually hidden items on the ground and stuff sometimes. And, oh, Clefairy just popped up. That's awesome. I'm gonna grab that, but... I feel like there was a Moonstone here in this- Oh no! Like, literally in this room, but I'm not finding it right now, so... Whatever, let's just go get that Clefairy, and... Bam! 
that is going to be our first one here in Mount Moon. Of course, uh, Clefairy is probably the most appropriate Pokemon to be in here because it is Mount Moon. And it does evolve with a Moonstone, but holy moly, there it is. What? That's twice now. I'm flicking it straight up, guys. I swear. I don't know how it goes so badly. I guess maybe I'm like holding my Joy-Con slightly tilted or... I don't know. I just feel like I'm throwing it like how I always do. And it just randomly throws it off to the edge of the screen. Uh, but hey, third time was the charm. Fuego's going to get to level 10 off of that. Uh, Caesar's also getting pretty close to evolving now, I believe, at level 16 for all three Kanto starters. Uh, adored for their cute looks and playfulness, they are thought to be rare as they do not appear often. Well, they're pretty common here in Mount Moon, at least, I believe, since it is basically the area was made for Clefairies. And there's this one area where, uh, I guess it was an episode of the Pokemon anime, I think when they went to Mount Moon, uh, where the Clefairy do like a little dance, and I feel like that was a thing in one of the Pokemon games. It might have been Heart Gold, Soul Silver, but I can never find it for some reason. Probably because it's only in those games, but yeah, I see you've got plenty of Pokeballs. If you ever run low, come talk to me, okay? Ah, oh, so if you run out of Pokeballs, does that dude give them to you for free? I'm gonna have to look into that because I feel like he would just giving you free Pokeballs is a little too easy, but I guess it's to be expected so far with Let's Go. If you run out of Pokeball somehow, you're doing something wrong, so you deserve to get some free ones at that point, bro. Like, you literally get more Pokeballs after every single battle, and you can buy more in the Mart, they're not that expensive. Uh, there's, there's a little bit of a leak there, I thought it might have like a special item, but nope. Let's just keep on trucking. And there's the Zubats, okay, there's not as many Zubats as I was thinking though, like, if this was more realistic, or oh my more closely resembled its original game, uh, you would basically just see Zubats. There would be no Paris, no Geodudes, just Zubats every two steps, bro. Uh, but thankfully, wow, I was thought I could sneak through, but Geodude's just a little bit too thick right now. He wanted to get that punch in. That's all right, you can run away from Pokemon pretty quickly here. And ooh, I was actually wondering if we were ever gonna see the regular old Team Rocket runs. So we're pulling a big job here. Get lost, kid. I'm sorry, I can't do that, sir. I know this logo, I know what you guys over at Team Rocket do, and I can't just stand by and let y'all keep stealing people's Pokemons and doing all that other dumb stuff that y'all like to do. Uh, but this dude's actually got a Hypno, which is also a Pokemon we have not run into yet, and also one that I don't think we can even catch yet, or at least we haven't been to the route where you can find it. Uh, but I'm switching over to Darwin here because we just learned Bite, actually, and of course, being a Psychic type, uh, Bite is going to be super effective on this Hypno, so let's see if we can get the one shot. Yes, I love it. And that's actually this Rocky Grunt's only Pokemon, so should be a wrap right there. How do I keep forgetting to check our TMs? Oh my gosh, guys. I don't know. I guess things just keep getting in the way. Like this Roost at level 17? Like that seems pretty OP. Restores the user's HP by up to half of its max HP. Does that literally mean it just... Yeah, it just gives you half of your HP back. I'm going to get rid of the sand attack. Roost is really, really powerful. And I'm just really surprised that Yegdip is learning it so early. Like, normally you don't get that until like level 50 as a Pidgeot. So, you are good. Oh, man. Don't act so surprised, man. I mean, if I made it this far into Mount Moon, clearly I've been able to beat up all the other trainers. So, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, we got a potion right here. And uh, there we go. It's looking more like the good old Mount Moon with all those Zubats. Aren't those dark colored things fossils? All right, Meowth, go get those fossils. Uh, I want Meowth to talk so bad. I don't understand. What are y'all doing anyway? Like, you're just staring? Quit goofing around already and go. You can do it, Meowth. I don't think Meowth wants to do it, dude. He's just chilling right now. All right, let's move on though. Uh, there is one more Pokemon here in Mount Moon that's actually pretty rare. I don't know if it only comes up as a rare spawn. Like, you gotta get a combo going. Just gotta run away from the little Paris and oh my gosh, Zubat just popped up right in front of us. It's a huge one. Get the large and in charge Zubat in our box and we can now move on uh, to ooh, another Rocket Run actually. Kind of a new Rocket Run, I would say. Since it's a female one, I mean, there's always been female and male rocket grunts, but I don't think there's ever been one that quite looked like this. So here we go with the R. Should be pirates, you know, because you guys sure love R. 
that makes no sense. <laughs> but she's got a Zubat, uh, so y'all know what that means. It's time to skip. I do love her character model though. Look at those eyes, bro. So fierce. I like that. It definitely looks realistic. Like, I don't know. Girls like that. I feel like I've seen a girl that looks like that nowadays is what I'm saying. I mean, maybe she even reminds me a little bit of my own girlfriend, actually, because uh, her makeup is always on point. Hey, stop! I found these fossils! They're both mine! That's not how it works, bro. Or I guess it kind of is, you know? Finders, keepers, losers, weepers, but... Uh, there it is, Super Nerd Miguel, and that's the face I was talking about earlier. He gets, like, so creepy when he's uh, using a Pokemon, or I guess commanding them to do an attack or whatever. Uh, but this dude here has got Voltorb, and unfortunately, Caesar's still a little bit low, so I think I'm actually just gonna go for a potion. I mean, this is, like, the first time we've actually used a potion in the game. This dude here sure loves his electric Pokemon, as Magnemite's gonna be his second one. Thankfully, Magnemite is Steel-type as well, so this should be super effective. Uh, even though Dark and Steel type actually weren't a thing in Generation 1 when Pokemon Yellow originally came out, uh, these games, of course, are adapted to the modern standards of Pokemon. So we got Dark type, Fairy type, Steel types in here. Uh, I actually didn't even look, but yeah, I believe Clefairy was a Fairy type, which of course didn't exist until Gen 6. But we're learning Poison Powder right now. Um, I guess I'll get rid of Wrap. Actually, Wrap Poison Powder seems like a good combo to use both of them, but I mean, it's not like I'm really using Bellsprout all that much, especially now that we got Caesar. but just drop the iPad, nothing matters anymore, I lost a Pokemon battle, my life is over! Fine, we'll each take a fossil, it's no good being greedy, right? That's what I'm saying, man! And this is a very tough choice, we've got the almighty Lord Helix himself, or of course, the Chrome Dome fossil, uh, but I am actually a avid member of the Church of Helix, so of course, I'll be choosing the Helix Fossil, Lord Helix himself. Alright then, the other fossil's mine. Well, now at least we get to move on. And I still haven't run into the Pokemon I'm talking about. There's actually two rare Pokemon that you can find in this area, and we haven't seen either of them. But, stop right there! Ow! <laughs> Why'd he spin like that? Hands off! That fossil belongs to us! Huh, how did you even get here ahead of us? We're Team Rocket! I'm Jesse! And I'm James! Meow, that's alright! Oh wait, now, now it doesn't talk. And the two of us are gonna take that fossil back! Oh snap, this is it! The first battle with the real Team Rocket, the OG! I mean, if anything, they're actually the fake Team Rocket, like, they don't even wear the correct uniform, if you guys noticed. Uh, they, like, a little bit more originality, you know? A little bit more pizzazz, and if anything, that makes them stick out even more, like, that's pretty bad for being a crime organization, you know, and they both have double poison types, which means that uh, Caesar is actually not going to do much in this whole battle, so uh, Bite doesn't actually do that much, so having Headbutt right now would actually be amazing, um, because if you guys don't know, there's this thing in Pokemon called the same type attack bonus, or stab, and it means that Pokemon using moves of the type that they are, so obviously since Darwin's a normal type, uh, if Darwin uses normal moves, it boosts their power by 1.5, I believe. Um, so, yeah, Headbutt would obviously be much better on our little Eevee here than Tackle. They're both normal moves, so they both get that boost, but Headbutt is just so much more powerful, so clearly we want that. We need it right now. Oh, wow, okay, that did a lot, actually. Quick Attack is pretty powerful. So if we had Headbutt, it would just be that much more powerful. I don't know how I keep forgetting, but let's just get through Jesse and James, and then I'll do it. How about that, all right? Caesar's learning Poison Powder now, though. Oh, is this the level where uh, Bulbasaur starts learning every single status move, like Poison Powder, Stun Powder, Sleep Powder, basically just the powder. <laughs> I don't know, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of stat boosting or like status moves either. Um, just I just like, you know, mashing a button and beating things up, man. Which is exactly what we're gonna be doing right now to this Ekans. So let's uh, go for the double quick attackness. And actually we just needed the one, okay. Oh, there it goes. Jesse and James. Definitely stylish, but not quite so stylish when it comes to Pokemon battles. I can't believe it! A twerp beat us! Oh, that face, dude. He dropped his rose. No. I want it, James. Looks like Team Rocket's blasting off! Oh, it's not blasting off again yet because this is the first time 
that we've actually made him blast off. But I'm assuming next time we're going to be seeing blasting off again, for sure. Run away from another Paris, and it looks like uh, the symbol in the bottom left is back. Usually that means that Eevee wants to play. Oh my gosh, no! Darwin, what is going on? Alright, I guess we have to play with him. I feel bad now, like I barely ever play with our Eevee. Uh, just because, you know, I'm doing the let's play slash walkthrough, and I don't really want to waste too much time. Um, since we've been going pretty slow with it so far, but uh, I definitely feel bad, you know, I got we got to do it. Oh, no, what? Oh, you don't like being pat on the head? Okay, I'll just I guess he's just like me, you know, likes being pet right under the chin. I actually don't like that, though. Like in real life, if I had to choose a place, I mean, it's not like people really get pet. That's kind of weird, but scratch for sure. It would be my head. Like, I love it when people actually scratch my head or play with my hair. I mean, I'm actually doing it right now for some reason. I'm just rubbing my hand around my head, uh, but we didn't get those rare Pokemon to pop up, and I'm pretty sure this is actually the end of Mount Moon, as we are now outside and on Route 4, but Chansey and Onix can actually be found in here, and for some reason we just didn't run into any of them, so maybe I've got to get a little bit of a streak going uh, with some Zubats or something, and uh, then they'll start appearing, because, you know, like I explained at the beginning of the episode, um, the combo catch will also not only make the chances of shiny Pokemon appear way more likely, but uh, you can also get better IV, so better stat Pokemon, and also rarer Pokemon can appear. So basically, the catch combo is everything in this game, and I uh, kind of want to go get myself at least an Onix before we move on. So let's just grab a couple of items here, um, because I know that this route, once you jump over a certain ledge, you actually can't return, and we'll be in Cerulean City basically, so... Hey, Fuego found something. Yo, Fuego, you're gonna set the bush on fire, dude! Get out of there! <laughs> Thankfully, that's not how it works in this game, because, uh, yeah, let's head back to Mount Moon, and we'll see what we can get. And Yegdip gets to level 18. If I'm not mistaken, that is the level at which, yes, Pidgey is evolving! Oh my goodness, the first time we're getting to see this screen, guys, the evolution in Pokemon Let's Go. And for some reason, we've been teleported to space, but who cares because we have got ourselves a Pidgeotto now. But for real, what's going on with this like weird hyperspace, hyperbolic chamber looking thing? This Pokemon's full of vitality. It constantly flies around searching for prey. And I love me some Pidgeotto. We're also at like a nice combo of five. So, you know, we're on our way to uh, getting that nice Onix. Uh, and since I just remembered, Let's finally check out the TM case. We've got Headbutt and Payday. Uh, looks like Darwin can actually learn Payday, but again, we got 70 power on Headbutt. So yeah, we definitely want to get that. Actually, pretty much all of our Pokemon can learn Headbutt. Maybe just like almost every Pokemon in general can learn Headbutt because I mean, everybody's got a head, right? You just got to like throw your big head at something and that's basically Headbutt. <gasps> there it is! The Chansey has already appeared! Oh, this is kind of upsetting because that means that we have to break our Geodude streak, but it's Chansey, so who cares? This is such an awesome Pokemon and also pretty rare to run into. Uh, I guess in general, not just here in Mount Moon, but we're definitely going to be using a little berry for this one. So it's got the red circle, or I guess orange. So it's not even at the highest level of, or most difficulty of catching yet. Um, but we're definitely getting there, so let's go for the Great Ball and the Berry, and why are you on the left side, bro? Oh my gosh! Alright, at least I still hit it somehow. Uh, okay, so I guess I'm pretty good at throwing Pokeballs to the left then. Uh, maybe that's my issue. I'm probably just holding the Joy-Con like a little bit at an angle or something, but... Uh, there we go. Now we gotta get it straight up, and... Oh, that was still a little bit to the left. Like, I don't know what's up with me, man. Maybe I'm... Because I'm using the Joy-Con with my right hand? I, I don't know. What a shame, honestly. What a shame. Uh, come on! That is... <sighs> Gordon Ramsay would be roasting us right now. Just like, what a shame. What a shame. I'm sorry, British people. Uh, or English. I, I, don't, I don't even know. Anyway, this should be it. Come on, Great Ball. Please. No! Oh my gosh. Almost got it. There's the toss. The nice capture this time. I feel like I could have gotten an excellent there, but I didn't want to risk him. Cool! I keep saying him, but I think Chansey's actually exclusively female too, so... Her! I didn't want to risk her! Wow. 
There's no way I'm about to run out of Pokeballs with this Chansey here. Dude! What? There it is! It, <laughs> it ran away. It got tired of me just throwing all my balls to the left of it. Oh, man. All because I couldn't throw the Pokeball straight. Like, come on. Well, guess we might as well take on this youngster. I'm just that upset that Chansey ran away that I actually feel like battling a trainer now. That makes no sense. Oh, this kid actually has a Mankey. The one trainer we skipped over had a unique Pokemon. Who would have thought? And Fuego getting levels too. Come on, is everybody about to level up? Oh, I lost. Yeah, that's the way it goes, man. But from your sorrow comes my happiness because Caesar is evolving. We just added him to the team officially this episode and already we're going to see him grow up and uh, bud into a beautiful flower. Or whatever that thing on his back is. Congratulations, we've got Ivysaur. I was not expecting it to go, or I guess evolve this quickly, but I guess that's what happens when you get a combo going. <gasps> there it is! Finally! At long last, the big old rock snake has appeared. Onyx! Oh my gosh. I thought I'd never see you, big boy, but we finally found one. In the wild, I think it's like a 1% chance or something, bro, because that took way too long. But, wow, he's really high up there. I don't even know if I can toss my Pokeball that high. Oh, okay, never mind. Get a nice one on that, and I swear, after the struggle, we've had this better catch first try. Yes, finally, guys, Onyx has been caught. We can move on with our lives, or, well, I guess just with the adventure. That is after we get our level ups in. And register this big old rock snake to the Pokedex. The tunnels it leaves are used as homes by Diglett. Oh, really? Seems like a bit too big for them, you know? But then again, I don't even know how Diglett works. Like, it's just magical. Does it actually have feet? Does it not? The world may never know. And now we can finally wrap up the episode by heading over to Cerulean City on top of our newly caught Onyx. Look at this monster! If you guys didn't know, a certain Pokemon you can actually ride on when you take them out of your Pokeball. This is nothing special, I literally just took Onyx out of its Pokeball and BAM! Look at this big old monster, dude. I'm gonna have so much fun riding around on this thing. Uh, although, I guess it's kind of glitchy when you get into an area that's like, too narrow for him to go through, you know? It just disappears, but he was just there, why is he gone? Alright, anyway, uh, I guess that is gonna do it for today. I feel like we got everything done that I wanted to, including teaching Eevee Headbutt. I don't know how to get that item there, but I guess we'll just forget about it for now. Run past the Spearow, and this is it. The point of no return. We can't go back to Mount Moon now, so Chansey, I'm sorry it was not meant to be today, but I have a feeling that's not the last time we'll run into Chansey. Like, I think he's in other... Uh, caves and routes as well, but speaking of caves, there's Cerulean Cave and here's Cerulean City So thank you guys so much for watching in the next episode We'll begin exploring this city here as well as maybe taking on the second gym Misty the girl that gets a little twisty. I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but we'll find out in the next episode <gasps>